When you think of hybrid, you probably have a mindset of small, geekish, quirky cars that have a lot of batteries and a confined space, but this week's edition really rethinks that whole mindset. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now behind me is the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid Edition. And what this vehicle does is allow, well, the family to get on the go and every now and then plug her up to get more electrified. Let's first start on the outside, the good old standard silhouette that really lets you know exactly what this vehicle is from any distance. From a mile away, you see it and you go, hey, minivan. Now, the hardest thing right now is to really have this vehicle stand out among the crowd. A lot of the competition really are mirroring one another's. And that's because after all, there's only so much evolution you can do to this vehicle. Now, granted, back in the early days of these vehicles, they were squared off, good old wood paneling, but we have at least evolved from there, all the way down to power doors, of course, power rear hatch, and tons of entertainment. And that's truly the premise of this. So why hide the fact of, well, this is a minivan, so let's just go with the standard silhouette. Now, we should truly drop the word mini because, as you can tell, these are hefty vehicles, and you truly see it on the inside when you can evolve this from people to cargo and tons of options. Even better is the overall layout. Nice and low to the ground, giving you a sedan-like feel. But again, with the overall size, it's definitely feeling a lot bigger than some of you may be ready for. So when you look at the overall numbers, this vehicle definitely measures up. It's no longer a minivan, and I've really got to get away from calling them that because they truly are full-size behemoth. When you look at the numbers, this is around about 203 inches, creeping it up into the full-size SUV area versus the mid-size numbers that are really around about 185, 190. So this one definitely coming in a lot bigger. As for wheelbase, around about 121 inches. Now I mentioned earlier that it's really snug to the ground. Ground clearance around about five inches. Now where that helps is truly on the ingress, of course, stepping inside, but also minimizes overall height with this vehicle truly falling under six feet tall. And where that comes into play is getting into those tight spots, the parking garages and so on. Have you gone through and felt like you're being squeezed down? Well, with the overall size here, it really is manageable into those type of areas. Now, one place that, well, is a little bit harder to manage is the width. And the one number to look at really is the width with the mirrors. This one creeping up around about 90 inches, almost eight feet wide. And where that truly comes into play again is in any parking space, parking garage, Anytime you see the word compact, well, it doesn't apply here. Now, one thing that can help, of course, is pulling these in right here. Be even more helpful if they had those powered, press a button, and these could tuck in. Certainly, the size of this vehicle can give some people pause because can they truly handle anything this big? Well, Chrysler knows this and, well, doesn't want you to go it alone. And the way they fix that is with safety features. First, starting with the camera system. Basically, a camera on the front, the side mirrors, and at the back. That's gonna give you that surround view seen on other vehicles of this size, allowing to give you the bird's eye view, see even the parking line so you can tell if you're in the right spot. Even better, as you creep into spaces in front or in behind, of course, you have the parking sensors, the radar-like approach, basically allowing you to kind of dive in. If anything is really close, it's gonna immediately tell you where that impact zone is versus older, kind of systems really give you a broad indication. This one lets you know something's here, stop the vehicle, and well maneuver around. Now what's great with this minivan is it is a big vehicle, so you're definitely gonna take up the road. And what I like is grill warfare, a nice front end that says, hey, honk, honk, I'm behind you, get out of the way, I gotta get to the grocery store. And this front end, nice and broad is well going to remind people that you mean business now it first starts with body color all the way around a little bit of black cladding when it comes to the grill and the lower fascia here with some nice chrome accents not not too blinged out in this very subdued color but i can imagine if you have a black exterior this would kind of maybe be a little bit more blingy not too shabby now the chrysler emblem has taken a little bit of a step back really just a nice slender shape through here now the overall design really is nice and broad nice and sloping as well really gives you a lot of uh, forward view now what i like is the headlights really menacing but they really project well a lot of throw down and of course you've got fog lights down low now what's really great is to add a little bit more flare well we flared out here at the bottom just to give a little bit of wow factor, at least from people from the front end. 
sweep around to the driver's side just to make sure it's no drastic difference. There's no cool factor on this side. Well, it's a twin addition. Both passenger and driver's side look pretty much plain Jane. Now, one thing to talk about really is the chrome we mentioned earlier. There is quite a bit of it here on the side mirrors, almost like a set of earrings to well dress this vehicle up. Now here on the driver's side, also this is the business side, the good old fill up. We have it there at the back end for the traditional fuel. Here at the front is the plug up version. Now what I'm referring to, there's a hatch here. You got the good old hybrid core there in the back and simply plug it up, plug it up to the house and that's gonna charge this vehicle. That's gonna turn it more into, of course, a golf cart like feel. Very little noise, give you modest range. Now, I tend not to spend a lot of time on this because hybrids with the electric battery, well, I just don't get into all the pluggability of it. But for people that are on the go and like that feature, I'm sure it will come in handy for you. Now, one thing I also like for any vehicle is speed of ingress. I don't want to mess with the key fob and well, in most cases I just want to grab the door handle and climb in. Now what I like is, well, the Pacifica does that. Now it came with two key fobs. One's a special one and we'll get into that in just a second, but basically you can leave it in your pocket. Now they are quite big basically because there's a lot of operation. Well, I'll show you in just a second. But what I like is the fact that we can simply put our hand right here. The vehicle knows we're there and it unlocks all the doors. That's going to come in handy when the uh, game gets canceled because of rain. Everyone needs to sling inside. We'll simply do that. Kids can climb right in. Now, of course, the side uh, doors are power. They get out of the way. Really a lot of width here to get inside and pretty much real easy to cl close. Just simply pull on and get out of the way. Now, down here at the fill-up area, what you're going to notice is it is locked all the time and I like the fact because that's a nice security feature something some vehicles are forgetting to do now you simply unlock it it's going to open up and fill up real easy no cap to mention now don't let me downplay the good old hybrid portion of this vehicle even though I don't plug it up all the time one good feature about that is you're going to get about 33 miles on each battery so that's going to give you decent range for any city dweller now if you combine that with the fuel driven power you're going to get over about 550 miles of range on one fill up and we definitely use that on our week excursion now let's talk about the back end here the good old business end now well nothing really to talk about it's good old minivan styling now you got the huge bank of glass really body color all the way around decent safety when it comes into the rear tail light assembly and of course the backup sensors backup camera all couple nicely to give you good sensory factor going back now as for the operation back here this is a power rear hatch and of course you can use the key fob but simply coming up here to the lower handle press the button it's going to rise to the occasion now once this is open what you're going to see is a nice amount of space now back here the floor itself is actually lower. That's gonna give you around about 32 cubic feet behind the final row. Now with the third row laid flat, it's gonna nearly triple the amount of cargo. And of course, with all the splitability and the style seating, there's tons of options when it comes to hauling people and cargo. Looking at the cargo area a little bit deeper now, talking about that low stance on this vehicle, one area that comes in handy is the lift over height here for the cargo area itself, just under about two feet. Now that's gonna mean anything that's really right here is only a barely heave and hoe, and of course it drops in to a nice cavern. Now that comes into really good play, especially when you have groceries, which this vehicle's definitely gonna find a uh, home parking space there because this is where you'll spend a lot of time. Now what's great is you do have these hooks here. Sometimes I forget what these are for, but truly to put your bag right there so it doesn't sling around, but it's a nice cavern to store anything, of course, you throw inside. Now, basically to get this vehicle to kind of fold and get these seats laid flat, it's real easy. Now, basically you're gonna pull here, it's gonna tumble backwards and pretty much it takes over. Now, I've used some other vans that have the push buttons and fold down, but with the ease of this operation, I'd say why pay for those extra options? Simply pull here, and let it tumble. Those are one of the easiest operated rear seats I've seen in quite a while. What's even better is with this lower floor here at the back, one nice seamless floor all the way through the vehicle. Dive into the cargo area, let's look at these two hatches. First, this is gonna have a battery behind it if you need to access. This is gonna have that extension cord in a nice bag so you can plug this vehicle up and get that good old battery function if you wanna use it. Now, one thing you note is these rear uh, seat belts. Now, they hang over here on the side, and as you have these rear seats laid flat, they really don't have any home life. That means, well, you're gonna hear that quite a bit 
as you're going down the road. Now, one feature I finally found is this little clip. Now, it does seem trivial, but the engineers truly think of everything. By keeping these, well, buckled to the side, it really minimizes, well, all this noise. It's hard to see some of these features sometimes when the seats are in place, so let's look at this real quick. Now, for each back seat passenger, you do have nice cup holders on this side, two on the other side, one. Now, I would also like a little compartment, and the reason they have that compartment is because on this side, they do have a USB connection to charge devices all the way back here for the back back seat drivers. What we also have is if you want to go tailgate in here, since this has a nice low stance, people are going to really look for that. They do have a nice uh, plug ability right here. Now, one thing we couldn't find on this vehicle as of yet is a good old house alley because a lot of these uh, devices that you plug into here, really people just don't care anymore. A lot of vehicles are coming with the household type of outlet. I haven't found one yet in this vehicle. So the Pacifica is a hybrid edition. Now it's not just a standard hybrid with a combination of power and electric, but it does again have that full electric mode. The first minivan in the industry to do this. Now, when you look at the power plant, what this vehicle really is offering is again, the 33 miles solely on zero emission electric power with its 16 kilowatt lithium ion battery. Now, when you look at the engine just by itself, it is a 3.6 liter Pinstar V6 engine with the stop and start technology. That's of course playing into the hybrid and the fuel efficiency. You gotta be well rounded in this area. Now, what you're gonna see when it comes to horsepower is around about 287 horses with 262 foot pounds of torque. Now, what I truly found with this type of horsepower is the vehicle really has a lot of get up and go. And you can actually find yourself well stomping the gas more than you expect. So you definitely want to watch that speedometer on the gauges. We looked at the third row and the good old stowability of that and it was quite easy, but the biggest thing really is the overall comfort. Now looking at the second row, first thing you'll notice in this particular model is the overall design. First you have dual captain's chairs in the second row, bench style for the third. Now legroom numbers is truly important. 41 inches in the first row, 39 here in the second, and not too shabby at 36 in the back. Now, what I like here in the second row is of course the captain's chairs and the fact that you have dual armrests. Now, that's something maybe you forget about when it comes to captain's chairs, just the fact that your overall comfort is really uh, front and center. Now, what I also like is entertainment. And what you're gonna find is dual monitors here on the back of the front seats, a really independent operation for both sides, good old headphones, remotes, really games built in entertainment has come a long way. Now backseat drivers are gonna have it made quite easy. They're gonna demand where to go and they're gonna feel comfortable while they do it. And it comes down to the tri-zone system, dual zones up front and of course a zone back here. And the controls are right up here. I'll show you in just a second. But basically you have fan speed, digital readout, temperature control, everything right there. Even better, vents right where you need them, right above the occupant. Now you have a huge bank of glass through the middle here, really giving you a lot of open lighting and you do have one here at the back. So what's great is every row really has individualized attention. The reason for that is because, well, no one's gonna to wanna to argue where you're sitting, so why not make everybody happy? The Pacifica came with two key fobs, like I mentioned earlier, but one is specifically referred to as the key sense fob. Now that's programmable pretty much by parents, allowing their teenage drivers to bar their minivan, but with limitations. Things like making sure the radio is off until the seats are buckled. You can only have a certain volume. You can't disable parking sensors and things like that. Now what's great is you can adjust all that here on the dashboard under the key sense app. Now pretty much hit that. We have a default code that they gave us. We put that in and it has all these safety features. Now you can pretty much go through them and what you'll see is the parking sense is on, the collision, you want the near obviously. And as you scroll down, you can see the different features. Now what's great is you can even limit the maximum speed of the vehicle, maybe 70 miles an hour. That will keep them off the highway. You can even tell them you can't get on the highway because you can only go 35. But whatever it is, you can have it set up here and it allows you really to monitor their driving when you're not with them. Looking at the Uconnect system a little bit deeper, what you're gonna find is it's a huge touchscreen system, really houses everything for the vehicle in one place and you do have nice shortcuts down below, but don't be confused because those are just your favorites. You do have, of course, everything you wanna find here on the apps and if for some reason you have something here that you'd rather have a shortcut, it's really easy. Just simply hold it, press, and drag down. Now, if it's already full, it'll replace one of the other ones and then you have it nice 
as a shortcut. Now, what I like is the fact that you can navigate this with ease and really everything is housed right here. Even better, the screen is kind of angled more towards the driver for ease of view. Now, it, the only controls you'll find down below really is for volume and tune select nice symmetric knobs. For climate controls, you'll find a decent little area right down below, really a, just a half arm stretch away from the driver. All the modes select really right in the middle, fan speed and temperature controls on the left and right. And what I like is this is nice and simple. A lot of other vehicles are really making this more cumbersome, really taking up a lot of space when this is nice, straightforward, and simple. Now, one thing that's not, well, normal is the gear select. Now, you'll see these knobs on a lot of vehicles, and it's just the good old gear select knob. Now, what's interesting, the transmission on this vehicle is a nine-speed automatic transmission, and you do have electronic parking brake here when you need it. If you want to find an area that's in competition with the Uconnect, well, look here at the gauger with that huge digital readout in the middle. Now, on both sides on the left is the hybrid information. On the right, the good old fill-up area. No tachometer to speak of on this vehicle. Instead, you do have a nice oversized screen in the middle. And what I like truly is the digital readout for speed. It makes for a nice, easy glance when you look down to see, well, how fast you're going. Now, you can navigate to other functions, but what I love is the digital readout for the speed is never hidden. It's actually way up there at the top, a little bit smaller, but you can scroll through and see other information as you go down. And of course, what I prefer is simply leave it on the speed to have that huge um, readout as you go down the road. Cruise control you'll definitely find on a lot of vehicles, but where you're gonna find it is here on the steering wheel, makes for ease of use. Now, one feature that a lot of vehicles don't have, but this one did, is adapter cruise control. What that does is give you kind of two different modes. This one's gonna be the standard, just set it, and you're gonna to have to monitor traffic. If you go down here to the bottom, you set this, that's going to allow the vehicle to monitor traffic, set the spacing on what you desire, and pretty much go with the flow. This is really helpful on long trips where you really just want the vehicle to set the pace. This can be more helpful when you're really setting the uh, tone here and there. For connectivity, you will find two USB power supplies, one right up here, one down below, and you will find some more down on a lower tray where you can basically put your devices and pretty much forget about it. Now it does for this edition of Road Warrior and a test drive behind the wheel of the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid, the first all-electric minivan in the industry, really giving you the best of all worlds, the gasoline power when you needed, the hybrid combination, and of course, the full battery mode to just give you that golf cart-like feel. Now what's great is this vehicle is going to end up in places where eventually urban areas are going to give you those power up modules, basically meaning while you're in the museum or while you're at the grocery store, you can of course plug and recharge. Cars, and that's where we're all headed to make the world, well, a little bit more eco-friendly. Now, what we can't forget is, well, this is still a true minivan. Really, of course, not mini, just a big van. A lot of room on the inside for people and, well, pretty much to get the job done. Now, as always, like thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.